Today we're going to be looking at a viewer's question. The viewer's name is uh, Manny QI. And uh, his question isn't 100% clear on what he's exactly trying to accomplish. So I hope what I teach here is what he's trying to do. But basically, he wants to download a number of images that he has in a list. So I've created a short little list here. If I cut out this file image.list, I have four images here uh, for links to images. And we're going to download each one, but he wants to rename each one, but preserve the extension. So in this case, we have a JPEG here, a PNG here, a PNG here, and a GIF here. So as he downloads each one, he wants to rename them, but preserve that extension. Uh, part of the thing I don't understand is like he, okay, he told me he has a list of files he's downloading, but he didn't tell me how he wants to choose what they're renamed to. Uh, which is kind of important in this in this aspect, but all I'm going to do in this case is rename each one with a random number as the file name, but we need to preserve that .png. Also, he uh, said he's using curl. I'm going to use wget, um, mainly because I'm a little more familiar with wget, and uh, I'll give you an example of why I choose wget in this example, just because of my knowledge of wget and my lack of knowledge of curl. Um, and I'm not saying uh, that wget's better. In fact, I think that curl is probably a little more advanced than wget, but I just have been using wget for so long, I kind of default to it. Plus, it's a little more common of being on machines by default. Anyway, if we use wget and put our link inside uh, a quotations here, we can hit enter, and it downloads the file, if it lists out here, you can see that it has saved the file. Unfortunately, this file has a space in the name, which is kind of annoying. Never put spaces in file names, but um, it downloaded it, and you can see it's a PNG file. wget automatically names it whatever it is named on the server. Let me remove that file, and let me cut out my image list file again and grab a better example that one doesn't have a space in the name I'll grab this one which is the Google logo I'll copy address and same thing as before we'll put in that link but now let's say we want to rename it as an output we can dash O which is also how you would do it in curl and we can say test dot or test dot PNG and we saved it to test dot PNG the thing is, as we're going through our list here, how do we know to name it .png? And that's what we're going to be going over today. I hope I'm making that a little more clear. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, let's start off and let's start creating a script here. I could probably do this in a one-liner, but it'd probably be kind of long and just make it easier for you guys to read. I'm going to put it in, um, in a script. Uh, so we'll just say down IMG is what we'll call our script and of course we're going I'm using Vim so use whatever text editor you prefer and I always you always start any script whether it's bash or Python or any other script uh, we're gonna put our shebang line which is that first line telling our operating system what interpreter to use to run the script in so next we're gonna say cat and we're going to cat out our image.list file. That would display all of our image, uh, uh, all the file, uh, all the text, each line of our file there, but we want to read it line by line. So we're going to use a while read loop, and we're going to create a variable. In this case, I'll call it IMG, because each one of these is the link to the, I, to the image. But of course, the IMG there is a variable, so you can call it within reason, whatever you'd like. Also, since it's a while loop, I'm going to go ahead and open and close my while loop. Okay, so at this point, what we can do is we can now try to grab the end of each file. In fact, I'm going to save this script and show you some output here in the command line. So we're cutting out our file, and then we're reading through line by line. We're going to say do and done. And if we were to echo IMG, or sorry, dollar sign a IMG once again putting it in quotations just in case there are spaces or other things in there um, that may uh, screw things up if we don't put our quotations it's just a good habit to be in you can see it's almost like cutting out the file um, but let's say we want to grab that dot PNG now of course we could use cut we can pipe that into cut 
and we can say um, with a delimiter of dot and we can say okay uh, we've got uh, a dot here a dot here a dot here and it's gonna be the the fourth after the fourth dot so we'll say dot uh, dash f4 for field 4 and here you can see that it's grabbing uh, everything after the fourth dot but you can see that causes problems sometimes because it worked okay for these two PNG files here, but the JPEG file has a different number of dots in it, and the GIF file has a different number of dots in it. Well, how do we come about uh, get around this issue? Well, if our file extension is at the end of the file, which it should be, isn't always when you're talking about links on the internet, so this isn't 100% effective, but um, the last, everything after the last dot should be our extension, so since we don't know how many dots there are, if we just make the ending the beginning, we always know that the first field is going to be our extension. And I hope that I'm making sense here. Um, I'll give you an example here, kind of kind of um, trim it down a little bit. If I say echo, and I use this file name here, obviously it just echoes out the file, but if I pipe that into REV, which is a program that will flip text around, you can now see it has printed out this text backwards. I did a tutorial on this once before, and I think we even talked about trying to come up with some useful uh, things to do with it. Well, this is something that we can do with it useful. Now, all of these files, if I was to uh, go back up to my loop here, and instead of using cut here, instead of that, we're just going to say REV, so it's going to read each line and flip each one. You can see that at the beginning of each one is our extension, but backwards, and that's fine. So if we were now to pipe that into cut dash uh, uh, D for delimiter, we're using the period as a delimiter. It's where we're cutting each line. Every single one should be field one. Now they're all still backwards, so all we have to do is pipe it back into REV. And there's our extension for each file. So we're going to do something like similar to that within our script here. So let's go back into our text file here, our script file. And what we're going to say is we're going to create a variable. We'll call it ext equals, and then we will say inside dollar sign and parentheses echo our img variable into reverse cut with a delimiter of a period dash f for field one and then reverse it back and there we go so now we have that extension should if I typed everything right inside that ext variable as it loops through each file so now we can say w get the img file or variable which is our link we can say dash o and we can say, in this case, we're going to name them random numbers. So we'll just say dollar sign capital random, which is our, our system variable for generating a random number. And we'll say dot ext. So it should download each file with its extension, but renaming it with a random number there. So let's go ahead, save that, and we will now change mod plus x, the name of our script, to make it executable. You only have to do that one time. And now we'll dot slash the file there. We'll hit enter. Oh, <laughs> I did do something wrong. You can see each one's labeled dot ext now because I forgot the dollar sign. So let's remove all files with the extension dot ext. Go back into our script, and that's just a typo on my behalf. I should have realized because it's red right there add a dollar sign there and that makes it the variable otherwise it's a string of ext and we'll run our script again and if I list it out you can see each file was downloaded renamed with a random number but preserved its extension whether it's a JPEG GIF PNG or PNG so I hope you found this useful um, I'll put this little link this little script uh, in the link in the first description of this video so go ahead and check that out so if I can do this there's our script it's only a few lines and that's one way of doing this um, once again there might be other issues sometimes 
if uh, the image is a script generated on the website, sometimes there might be other stuff after the extension and uh, I'd have to find an example of that to work my way through it. But I hope Manny QI, this answered your question. I hope you found it uh, useful. And obviously it's not just for downloading files. Anytime you need to grab the extension of a file, you can use REV if you have REV on your system it may not be available on all systems. There are other ways to um, reverse strings, um, but this is the easiest. Rather than writing some sort of for loop that's like three lines long, we just type three letters, REV, and it's reversed. So thank you for watching, um, and I hope that you have a great day. Hey everybody, I'm back again. I uh, just realized as soon as I finished recording that um, I could use curl in this example. I used wget because I originally was going to download each file, then rename them, and I didn't know how to download directly to the file name that it was on the server using curl, although I'm sure you can. I'm just off the top of my head, I don't know how. Um, so I went with wget, but then I realized I didn't do that. I ended up going a different route while I was making the tutorial, and it's very simple to change this over to curl. So if I go back into our script here, and all I have to do is take out curl and change this capital O to a lowercase o, I believe, with curl. We'll save that. I'll list out right here. I've got our script, uh, our list of files in an empty folder that I created and never used. Uh, and if we run our script now, list it out. There we go. We accomplished the same thing with curls. So that was just my mistake. I was originally going one direction and ended up going another direction, and it didn't matter whether I used wget or curl in this case. So just wanted to give you that little update there. Uh, once again, thank you, Manny QI, for the question, and I hope that all of you found this tutorial useful. Have a great day.